This is part 24 of Blazor tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss event handling in Blazor with examples. At the moment, we are on the employee details component and here is what we want to do. When I hover the mouse over employee photo, we want to display the mouse X and Y coordinates in the card header right here next to the employee full name. So obviously the first thing that we want to do is create a property in the component class that's going to hold the mouse X and Y coordinates. Next to the employee property, let's create another new property. We don't need public access modifier protected will do because we just need to access this property from the view. Data type is string and let's call the property coordinates. Now. As we hover the mouse over employee photo, we want to display the mouse X and Y coordinates. This means we want to handle mouse move event. So within the component view, we have the image element right here, which displays the employee photo and we want to handle the mouse move event. Notice as soon as I type the character at and the word on, we see all the events that we can handle and the event that we want to handle is on mouse move. The value for this is the event handler name. We can give the event handler any name we want. I'm going to name it mouse underscore move. Notice when I have the mouse over on mouse move, we can see it's actually a delegate of type event callback and it receives a parameter of type mouse event args and we know a delegate is a function pointer. So all we need to do is create a function with this name mouse underscore move in the component class and it's going to receive mouse event arguments as the parameter. So within our component class, let's create the event handler function right here. Access modifier is protected. It's not going to return anything. So the return type is void and the name of the function is mouse underscore move. It receives a parameter of type mouse event args, let's call the parameter E. We need to bring in the required namespace. Let's do that by pressing control period. As the name implies, this object mouse event args carries the mouse X and Y coordinates as we hover the mouse over employee photo. And we want to store those coordinates in this coordinates property. So coordinates equals, we're going to use C sharp string interpolation. So dollar x coordinate equals, notice on this object of type mouse event args, we have client x property which returns the x coordinate. Similarly, y coordinate equals e dot client y. All that is left to do is in the view bind to this coordinates property. Remember, we want to display the mouse x and y coordinates in the card header next to the employee full name. So right here, we use the character at and then we also get the IntelliSense. The name of the property is coordinates. Let's save all our changes and take a look at the browser. Notice as I hover the mouse over employee photo, we see the mouse X and Y coordinates. With event handling, we have a few moving parts. So let's quickly review what we have done. First, in the component class, we created a property coordinates. This is the property that's going to store the mouse X and Y coordinates. And then in the component view on the image element, we are handling mouse move event. The name of the event handler is mouse underscore move. So our obvious next step is to create this event handler method in the component class. And we know this event handler method receives mouse event arguments object as the parameter. And it carries the mouse X and Y coordinates as we have the mouse over employee photo and then we are storing them in the coordinates property. Finally, in the view, we bind to this property to display the X and Y coordinates as we are hovering the mouse over employee photo. At the moment, to handle this on mouse move event, we first created a separate named method within the component class and then specified the name of this method right here in the HTML. Instead of creating a separate named method, if our logic is a simple one liner like this, we can directly handle this event in the HTML itself by using a lambda. So we use a pair of parentheses and give our parameter a name. I'm going to call it E and let's copy the expression from the component class and then paste it right here. In the component class, we no longer need this mouse move method. So let me comment this. 
Notice our application works the same way as before. Now let's look at another quick example. We want to include a button here and when I click that button we want to dynamically show and hide this card footer. First within our application site.css file I'm going to include a CSS class. As you can see all this class does is set the display attribute to none. We are going to use this class to dynamically show and hide this card footer. Next in the component class I'm going to include two properties. Notice button text property is initialized with this text hide footer and CSS class is set to null. In a bit we'll see how we are going to use these two properties. Next in the card body we want a button here. So let's include the HTML for that. In the component view let's include the button right here after the department name. Notice we are handling the button click event. The event handler name is button underscore click and the button text is bound to button text property which we have in our component class and it is initialized with this text hide footer. So when this button is initially rendered it's going to display the text hide footer. Our obvious next step is to create this event handler method within our component class. So let's include the event handler right here. If the button text is hide footer, we are changing it back to show footer and initializing CSS class property with hide footer. Remember, this is the CSS class that we created in our site.css file and all it does is set the display attribute to none. This means on whichever element we apply this class, it's going to hide that class. And what is it that we want to hide and show? It is this card footer. So on this div element we want to add and remove this class dynamically and we have this class name within this property CSS class. So to dynamically add and remove that class we bind to this property on this div element and the way we do that is by using add character and the name of the property is CSS class. Let's save all our changes and take a quick look at the browser. Notice when the component is initially rendered, the button text is hide footer. When I click the button, the footer is hidden and the button text changes to show footer. When I click this button again, the footer becomes visible and the text changes back to hide footer. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening. Thank you.